Hey there, everybody. I'm checking my teeth to make sure I have no lipstick on them. So if I do, make sure and let me know. Hey, I'm Angela Sackett. I write for saltetlux.com. That's S-A-L-E-T-L-U-X.com, which stands for salt and light. I share DIY tips and recipes and home decor. And today we're going to be talking about manners so that we can encourage others to be salt and light, sharing God's love in this world through hospitality. I also write with dancingwithmyfather.net, so you can check me out there as well. And I would love to invite you, if you're watching live on the Sell at Lux page on Facebook, sign up for our mailing list, as well as click like on this post and share it if you're watching and you think there's valuable content. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty. I, I started my last Facebook live with a little bit of a rant, and I'm gonna start with maybe a nervous mom story today. So I'll never forget when my family with three small children moved in next door to an etiquette teacher. And I, with fear and trembling, um, told her we were pregnant with our fourth and we proceeded to have a fifth while we were living next door and sharing a wall of a townhouse. And always uh, was a little bit, I guess, on edge just to make sure that my kids were behaving well for our etiquette teacher neighbor. She was a wonderful neighbor and she was always kind and more than gracious and loving to my kids and I had nothing to worry about, but that's what we do as moms. The flip side of that story is that I have noticed, and especially with a cultural change in moving to a different part of the country, that certain things that I consider to be basic good manners aren't accepted the same way everywhere we go. And so I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit today. Do manners matter at all? What kind of manners matter? Is it just about which fork and spoon you use at the table, or is it about um, whether you say yes ma'am or not with a good southern girl, southern boy accent, or is it about whether or not a man holds a door for a lady? And of course, you know my answer, if you know me at all, online or in person, is that yes, they do matter. So I would love to just take a second as we're getting started, and if you're watching live, say hey, and um, invite you to share questions that you have, or thoughts that you have on what really matters when it comes to manners. Um, if you're a parent, what kinds of things is it important to you for your kids to do when they're meeting new people or when they're having dinner at a friend's house? Um, and then if you're an adult, if you're a woman, how do you expect to be treated by men? I have a neighbor who is um, very feminist a woman and she wants to be treated equally on all levels with men. And so for her, she does not expect nor want a man to hold the door open for her. Um, so I would love to just hear feedback from you because I know that some of this is cultural and some of it is just basic human decency and um, that's kind of where I land that matters or <laughs> manners really do matter um, especially in today's society so any questions I'll keep going um, wanted to just share um, one of the things that I've noticed in our culture I don't know if you're like me but I am a big follower of royalty not all royalty but in particular, Princess Kate Middleton, um, ever since we learned that she was engaged to be married to a prince all the way through the wedding, and even today as she's a young mom, um, people all over the world follow her. We wanna know what she's wearing, we wanna know where she's going and how she's interacting with everyone from celebrities to little kids on the street to old ladies. And I think there's a reason for that. I think that no matter how free we think we are as a society, um, or how accepting we are, or how anybody wants to live, I think that there's a little part of all of us that really values that idea of the king and the queen and the prince and um, the etiquette and court behavior. And um, there's a reason for that. That's because we were created to be decent in how we treat each other. Um, Paul J. Zach, who is a neuroscientist, wrote a book called The Moral Molecule. I'm gonna get all sciency on you for a minute. And he said, my colleagues and I have found that when someone is nice towards another person, the recipient's brain releases oxytocin and this causes him or her to respond with kindness. Oxytocin is the embodiment of the golden rule. So we all know oxytocin is the feel good hormone and scientifically it has now been shown that when we're actually kind to someone, it releases that hormone and it makes us wanna be kind to somebody else. So, Actually, the golden rule, treat others as you want to be treated, is true scientifically. I thought that was kind of cool. He also noted that when men are distrusted or they feel like they're distrusted, 
They experience a sharp spike in testosterone provoking an aggressive response. Women have this response too, but it's just more muted. So the opposite is also true. When we feel like we're being disrespected, it makes us angry. Now I'm gonna get a little political for just a minute. Can't help it. Um, it's no surprise, it's no secret that our world today, and especially in our nation, we are struggling with um, horrible acts of violence. We have everything from police brutality to race brutality to children committing acts of violence. And it seems to be increasing, not just in our country, but around the world. And I wanna say that I think part of that is we don't respect human life. We don't respect other people. And one of the most basic ways that we can do that is by being courteous to them. And also, our courtesy towards other people is rooted in respect. When we believe that someone is valuable just because they're a person, we will treat them that way. Um, so there's my sciencey political talk. So any questions? Anybody have thoughts you want to share? What's important to you when it comes to um, manners? What do you? How do you want to be treated? And what's important? What are the can't miss um, things for you? Um, and if you're watching later, I want to hear that too. So please leave comments below. Have a thought. Natalie Gingrich said, I definitely want my husband to treat me like a lady. We've instilled the same in my son. Awesome, Natalie. That's so cool to hear, and I know that about you. So thank you for sharing that. Um, yes, I think there's something really powerful for women. Even though we want to be treated equally, we don't want to be treated that as if we're not important um, or as strong or as capable, but we do want to be treated as though we're precious because we are, because we were made precious. So thank you. I'm so glad you shared that. Um, also, let's see a little bit, um, good manners, they foster respect from others. Um, when I was in college, I took a class called interpersonal relationships and we talked in that class about how people sit when they walk into a room. A person who sees themselves as a leader will tend to sit in front of other people. Um, people that don't feel as valuable maybe, or they struggle with self-esteem, they may try to hide, they may slouch their bodies, they may show that with what they wear. But the opposite is also true. If you're going to apply for a job, typically you want to dress up, right? You want to look nicer. You want that prospective employer to know that you are professional and that you have your act together. Um, but I've noticed in our society today, even the standards of what we wear have started to relax more and more. Um, when you go into a formal setting, a lot of times people, even at weddings, will be super casual. Um, we were, attended a funeral recently and um, people were very casual. And I'm not passing judgment on any of those people, but I think it's it's a really interesting sign of our times that um, we don't even consider formal, um, very emotional passing type of events, life-changing events, um, to be worthy of that dress. And the flip side of that is also true. It's just fun to dress up. <laughs> um, my daughter and I talk about that a lot. You know, when she goes to a party for a sports team, she wants to know, of course, what's everyone going to be wearing and. I remember my grandma teaching me when I was little, my grandma Ruth, she, um, even up until she passed away as an older lady, she always wore her little kitten heels and she always had her hair done once a month, or not once a month, once a week <laughs> by her hairdresser. Um, and she wore just put together outfits and she taught me that you feel better when you dress that way. So um, how we carry ourselves and how we dress, that also affects how others treat us. And, um, although, of course, we want to be careful that we're not holding it against someone if they're not dressed a certain way or standing a certain way. We need to be aware that it is affecting how others see us. So, um, kind of cool. Thoughts? Ms. Renee Young says, I think manners are important because it helps instill empathy into our kids. Etiquette is making yourself slightly less comfortable to make someone yes. else slightly more comfortable. Oh my gosh, that is brilliant. I, if you guys could hear that, um, Renee said, that etiquette is making ourselves slightly less comfortable to make others more comfortable and um, powerful, incredible concept. Um, and there's biblical truth in that as well. Um, I wrote it down. Romans 12, 10 says that we're to take delight in honoring each other. If you're someone who reads scripture, um, God also teaches us that we should put others as more important than ourselves. And I think that kind of shows up our tendency to put ourselves in the role of number one um, in our patience when we're waiting in line for our Starbucks or um, when we're at a red light. And no, I've never ever honked my horn at somebody who didn't hit the gas fast enough and you be quiet, my daughter, behind the camera. <laughs> um, but I think that when we are 
impolite, rude to other people, it shows that we don't value them as much. And um, Renee, as a mom, I think that's incredible that you're teaching your kids that. Um, and by the way, happy birthday. I think your little girl has a birthday today. I saw that earlier on Facebook. Um, so please tell Nora happy birthday from the Sackett family. Um, just a quick check-in if you're watching. My name is Angela Sackett and I write for saletlux.com. That's S-A-L-E-T-L-U-X.com, which stands for salt and light. And um, share DIY tips and recipes and hints on living with hospitality. Um, so let's see. Oh, a couple of thoughts that I had that I'll share. Um, one thing is the power of please and thank you. And I don't know if this is something that you've noticed where you live, um, but I've noticed that people don't say thank you anymore. Um, we just expect that, that we're going to get what we want. Um, for me, one of the big places I notice that is when um, someone crosses the street in front of my car or when I go to cross the street, I always try to wave and say thank you, even though, yes, by law, they're supposed to stop for pedestrians. Um, but most people just drop their head and keep on walking. And I think there's something so valuable about showing someone that they're worth saying thank you. Um, somebody must be saying yes to that. <laughs> um, my daughter's nodding her head anyway, she agrees. But we try to make it a point, even um, when we're checking out at the cash register at the grocery store or at the big box stores, um, just to say thank you um, for someone doing their job and doing it with a smile or doing it as though they care about what they're doing. Um, this morning, there was a man at the coffee shop um, I was working at who went around to each customer that had children um, and handed them a Frisbee, the local market, for any of you that are in the North Jersey or South Jersey area. Um, and there was such a sweetness about him. He looked each little kid in the eye and told them, thank you for coming. And as I left, I shared with him, I keep coming back here because of the way that you treat your customers. You make me feel like I'm important and valuable. And I think there's something really amazing when we take the time to do that for somebody. So um, please feel free to weigh in if you're watching live or if you're watching later and you have things that are important to you when it comes to manners. And I'll keep working through my list in the meantime. Um, <laughs> we used to say to one of my children who shall remain unnamed, change your face um, when he would have a frowny face on. And I think it's really important to be aware of our countenance, of how we look at people. Um, there are some people that when you meet them, you may know them for a while and they look like really grumpy, miserable people. But then you get to know them and they're not. They're happy and joyful. And so I think there's something to be said for just um, having a smile, for having your eyes lit up to somebody, having joy that you're, you're glad to see them. And also, when it comes down to that, um, name calling is a good thing the right kind of name calling. So when you meet someone, when you're talking to them, I just wanna encourage you whether you're a grown up or um, whether you're a mom teaching your young children, encourage them to use someone's name. And um, it does a couple things. One, it says you're valuable. I, I consider you worthy to call you by name and um, remember your name. And I struggle with that, so that one's important to me. Repeat somebody's name back when you meet them. Um, comment. No, nope, we're good. Okay. Um, while I'm on that tangent, I'm going to get feisty again for just a minute. I want to challenge moms and weigh in if you don't agree here, but I think that especially for younger children, it's important to call adults by Mr. or Mrs. or Miss and Mr. just to show them respect for age. I read an article several years ago and I found it again today and I'll share it on uh, my blog post on saltatlux.com this week as we talk about manners where a lady said why I prefer to be a Mrs. Mom. And she talked about how when kids call her Mrs. in their last name, um, it gives them a sense of trust and safety in that adult, that they can trust that adult as a, a safe authority. So I just wanna encourage you to consider that. And if you don't agree with that, I would love to hear feedback on why as well, um, because I'm, I'm curious to know if that's just a cultural thing. I have noticed um, with Mr. and Mrs. and also with yes ma'am and yes sir, um, being in a northern state versus being in a southern state, it sticks out when my kids um, say yes ma'am to somebody or when they say Mr. or Mrs. And um, it gives us a lot of times an opportunity to talk to them about why we've taught our kids manners or why we value them as a person. Um, so it's a cool talking point and it's um, again a way for your kids to learn to value others but also for others to feel valued. Um, what about, uh, I'm talking a lot about kids, but, um, and I'll give one more on those two, and that is to encourage you 
practice in private. I don't know if you've ever had this embarrassing mom moment, I have, uh, where I went to say to one of my kids, you know, introduce yourself, and they did this and wouldn't introduce themselves. Um, that's uncomfortable as a mom and it's embarrassing, but it's normal, it's what kids do. But you can help them if you practice when you're at home. So practice things like the right way to pass dishes. And by the way, public confession to make right now, um, we've been passing the dishes wrong in my house. I always thought you were supposed to do it clockwise. And um, mom, if you're watching, you'll be super embarrassed because you gave me this book, Emily Post Book of Etiquette at graduation, and I should have known this. But I just reread today that when you pass dishes around the table the first time, they should go counterclockwise. Um, Y'all are gonna know how completely uh, not with it I was when I confessed that to you. But anybody else not know that? After the first time around, you can pass it whatever way is easiest. But anyway, those are the kind of things that you can practice at home with your kids and even as an adult. Um, salt and pepper shaker, they should always travel as a pair. I learned that in high school. Um, so practice those things. Practice with your kids how to shake hands and how to look in someone look someone in the eyes when you talk to them. Um, so grown-ups, how about etiquette? How about kindness um, in the workplace? My mom was sharing with me recently that they have a whole manual of um, policies for how to behave in their workplace, and she was she got feisty too as she was telling me about it. How ridiculous is it that we have to have a book of rules on how to just treat people kindly that we work with um, and how much faster things would get done and how much more efficiently in her opinion if people just had those basic rules of courtesy um, one of those I remember my neighbor friend Kim Goddard I don't know if you're here but I'm talking about you girl the etiquette teacher um, t teaching my kids when they went to one of her classes when you shake hands you should meet the web of your hand with the other person's hand. You should have a firm grip, but not too firm. Um, those things are important. Um, my friend Mike, um, your, his beautiful bride is a newscaster, and I know that she has um, dealt with meeting with dignitaries in um, situations where it's really important that you treat them with some of the basic common things, um, courtesy, shaking hands correctly, looking someone in the eye, not too long so it's creepy, but just long enough so that they know you value them. Um, any other cultural things that you can think of? Maybe if you're living in a certain part of the country. I don't think I have any out of the country viewers, but anything that you can think of that's um, expected to be a certain way where you live. Um, Natalie, I know that you're in Texas, so it may be even more that Southern gentility that's expected. Um, so please share that in the comments below if, if that's the case. Um, expect respect. So in your household or in your family, um, whether you have kids or not, expect to be respected. Um, when you do that, you show that you're valuable to others. When you treat them with respect, when you expect them to treat you with good manners, um, you teach them that you're valuable as well. So what goes around comes around. I think that's true with good manners. Maybe not always. I've gotten some not so polite gestures by people <laughs> driving in different parts of the country. Um, whether I was nice or not. So it doesn't always happen that way, but we want to treat others as more valuable than ourselves and um, Validate for them that they're worthy of respect. So Renee back to you. That was really awesome um, Anything else clothing wise modesty? I think is something that's important and I know not everyone agrees with that and that's okay um, but I think it's very important for us um, as men and women just to honor the people around us with the way that we dress um, funny quote that I read, which I thought was hilarious, um, Oscar Wilde, playwright, writer, it is absurd to divide people into good and bad. People are either charming or tedious. <laughs> I don't want to be tedious. Some people might think I am anyway, but I want to be charming. And, um, really the way that you behave can change the whole mood of the room. When you're in business negotiations, um, when you're interacting with your neighbor, um, you can change the whole mood of what you're walking through based on how you treat someone else with kindness, with courtesy, with good manners. Um, studies have shown that good manners reduce violence and encourage peace. And if you have siblings in your house, you know that. <laughs> if they treat each other with kindness, then there tends to be less arguing and rabble rousing. And that's true even on the larger level of our society today. Um, interesting quote, a dying culture invariably exhibits personal rudeness. 
bad manners, lack of consideration for others in minor matters. A loss of politeness or gentle manners is more significant than a riot. That's Robert Heinlein, um, who studies courtesy and violence. And uh, one more quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. I'm full of quotes today. <laughs> Life is short, but there's always time enough for courtesy. So um, do manners matter? I think they matter quite a bit. I think that they not only can shape our, the mood in a room, they can shape how others view us. Um, they can make people know that they're as valuable as they are just because they're created human beings. And ultimately, I think they can change our world, our society. So any thoughts, any feedback? Renee Young says, I make my kids call adults Mr. and Mrs. and ma'am and sir. I found that kids who address adults politely get way more leeway with their behavior. It's yeah. silly, but if my kids are polite when they speak to adults, I find others are more likely to attribute their behavior to regular kid energy rather than defiant attitudes. That is, oh my gosh, ginormous. That is so true. Um, when your kids are polite, and I, if you couldn't hear that, when your kids are polite, they do, they get more leeway. Um, I, I can tell you a perfect example of this. Um, one church that we attended, our pastor's wife was the most um, precious woman. She's a grandma now. And um, Becky, if you're watching, I'm talking about you, girl. Um, she is such an incredible woman, filled with grace for the people in her church. And um, she's also a mama to the kids and a grandma to some of the kids. And um, I knew that to be true of her. I saw her give my children grace many times for rotten kid behavior. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that she knew they respected her as an adult and they treated her um, with good manners. So Renee, yeah, it's totally true. I agree with you 100%. Um, Adults will respond to your children based on that. Um, and we've had that proved to be true too in college. Our oldest son has struggled um, with a couple of classes his freshman year of school and he made it a point to go to the professor and look him in the eye and show him the respect to say, would you spend some time with me? Would you help me? And um, it was very helpful for him. So all the way up into the workplace, you know, he's learning in the higher education and then in the workplace too that how he treats others with manners and with courtesy, it, it does affect how they treat you too. So, good point. Awesome. Any other thoughts? <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I know it's seven o'clock, probably some mamas are tucking their babies in and some people are just getting home for work. So I'm really thankful if you watch live. And if you're watching live or if you're watching later, there's a little button on the Salt at Lux Facebook page that says, um, subscribe or sign up. Um, love it if you would click that button and sign up for our newsletter and we'll share tips and tricks and heart thoughts. Thank you for being here. Have a great night.